This is Earth, our home, our birthplace, and the only beacon of life in the universe as we know it. There are billions and zillions of planets in the universe, and we have not even scratched the surface yet. Life outside planet Earth is not outside the realm of possibility. There are many factors which play a role in making life possible on Earth, and through the same factors, scientists believe life can exist on other planets as well. It's not necessary that life on other planets exist only if their conditions match the same as Earth. Studies have shown that certain microscopic life on Earth can also exist under extreme conditions on Earth. This indicates that life can also exist on other planets, even if the environments and conditions don't match the norms of Earth. Following are some of the most important requirements scientists examine to determine if life exists on other planets. That being said, here are some of the qualities we examine to determine a planet's habitability. An energy source. Organisms use light or chemical energy to run their life processes. We need our habitable planet to be provided energy. Let's choose something random, like a star. Our sun is a yellow dwarf, a relatively rare type of star that's both small and stable. It also has a long life and probably won't start to fizzle out for another 5 billion years or so. Larger stars generally burn hotter and die sooner, while smaller stars have a tendency to spit out enormous plumes of radiation. The star for the habitable planet has to be stable as our sun, not emitting too much radiation and neither too hot. There should also not be too many solar storms, as they can wipe out whole atmospheres of planets if the magnetic fields of planet is not strong enough. Liquid Water This is the primary requirement for our definition of habitable. The inner habitable zone is defined as the minimum star planet distance where the planet can reside before the runaway greenhouse effect occurs and any surface water would become vapor. The outer edge of the habitable zone is the maximum semi-major axis beyond which even a strong greenhouse effect could not sustain surface temperatures high enough for liquid water. Where there is water, there is life. It's known to all people of knowledge that water is the most important aspect to life on Earth, since without it, life ceases to exist everywhere. Life can grow and reproduce at temperatures as low as minus 15 degrees Celsius and as high as 122 degrees Celsius. Liquid water is the optimal medium where chemical transport can occur efficiently enough that complex organisms can develop. An atmosphere Without an atmosphere, a planet cannot advect heat or protect organisms from dangerous radiation and particles. In addition, atmospheres are clearly a requirement for organisms to be able to access atoms and molecules necessary for metabolic reactions. This also occurs in liquid environments, but a planetary atmosphere would still be needed. Without one, lack of atmospheric pressure as well as direct exposure to stellar radiation would evaporate the ocean. Atmospheres also protect the planets from coming meteors and asteroids by burning them as they enter the atmosphere. This is actually understood less than you might imagine. Typically, we see a magnetic field as something that protects the atmosphere from charged particles and atmospheric erosion. That still seems to be true, but the story is incomplete. Venus doesn't have a particularly strong magnetic field, and yet it has a very thick atmosphere. The implication is that an atmosphere of a certain composition and density can shield itself from excessive particle escape, but these types of atmospheres don't seem as though they would be very hospitable. This means that the planets with such atmospheres which survive without the magnetic field are not really hospitable for life. 
Their atmospheres are not wiped out by solar storms due to certain chemical composition. For now we should still consider magnetic fields as important for the development of life because Earth has a very specific atmosphere which enables life to exist and this atmosphere can easily be wiped out by solar storms if there was no magnetic field. At any rate, this is not something we can currently study with other planets in the universe, as magnetic fields remain undetectable around such small distant objects. Life takes time to develop. If you have a planet around a massive star, the star may, and probably will, die before conditions on the planet become habitable. It took the Earth about a billion years before the planet's surface and the solar system calmed down enough that single-celled organisms could arise. Consistent bombardment and a global game of the floor is lava meant it was a pretty unfriendly place for organisms of any sort. Even after that, the development of multicellular organisms took another 2.9 billion years. However, N dwarfs are optimal stellar candidates for finding habitable worlds. One reason is due to their incredibly long lifetimes, which are in the ballpark of one hundreds of billions to trillions of years. Such stars might even be better for the development of life on exoplanets than our Sun. Intense ultraviolet and X-ray radiation is bad for atmospheres, surface water, and organisms. So, a planet around a star with very intense XUV radiation or flaring will have some problems with habitability. This is bad news for M dwarfs because they are quite active in this region of the EN spectrum. However, M dwarf XUV activity calms down a bit as they age. Rotation slows, magnetic fields weaken, flaring becomes less intense, so habitable zone rocky worlds around older N dwarfs have better chances at habitability. This, like the last point, is not an attribute of the planet itself, but it's important. For a long time, we thought Jupiter was our friend, protecting us from civilization ending our solar system objects. As it turns out, gas giants are more likely to send those objects heading straight for us than to deflect and protect. In addition to this, massive planets in M dwarf planetary systems, which are the most likely place we will find habitable planets, can disrupt the formation of smaller rocky planets by providing enough of a tidal disruption over the course of many orbits that core accretion planetesimal formation is unable to occur. So we think that habitability is not as likely in planetary systems that possess gas giants. If star systems do not have any gas giants, it can be beneficial for the development of life on a planet. This is for two reasons. First, it is important in maintaining a strong magnetic field. Secondly, tidally locked planets have an atmospheric circulation problem. You get one side of the planet incredibly hot and the opposite side incredibly cold. For thick atmospheres, heat can still be circulated and you may have habitable regions near the day-night terminator. For thin atmospheres, what may happen is that atmospheric gases are heated on the day side, circulate to the night side, and freeze out as ice. This will continue until all of the atmosphere is frozen, having precipitated on the night side. This is why rotation of planets is very important for life. The more circular the orbit, the better. A highly eccentric orbit means the planet spends some time very close to the star, receiving tons of energy. The rest of the time is spent further away, losing the energy to space. 
The more stable a planet's environment is, the more likely life can develop without having to adapt to a complex seasonal variability. Plate tectonics provide heat and energy to the surface of the planet, and also play an important role in chemical mixing, as well as potentially crucial outgassing. Sometimes, this is not great, but it can also be a mechanism by which water, oxygen, and heavy elements become accessible at the surface. That's all time we have for today's video. Like this video if you found it helpful and don't forget to press the bell icon so you won't miss any updates.